I cried a lot. Why did I pick this? I know why well, you picked this. I picked it because I thought it's got cloud people in it. But now <laughs> I remembered after picking it that it isn't cloud people. And I think it is important that we knew what had been happening in his life. But like, I kind of didn't care. Hey, I'm just checking in quickly before the video to remind you, if you don't know already, that on Thursday the 10th of September, so this Thursday, it is my one year booktube anniversary, so I'm holding a live with some of my favourite people ever, Riley, Mina, Nicole and Sabine, and we're just going to be hanging out and chatting and answering your questions and just having a fun time. So I'll leave it linked down below so you can set your reminders, it's going to be so much fun. It's at 8pm BST and I can't wait to just hang out with you. You, so I'll see you then and now we'll get into the video. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're well. Today for this week's reading vlog I thought I would recruit Tom again. Are you happy to be back? I'm over the moon. <laughs> lies, lies and more lies and lies on top of lies. For this week's reading vlog I thought I would get Tom to pick what I read. So I've got I'd say maybe like 25 books of me, 20 books. I haven't got all my unread books with me but I've got a fair few and so Tom is gonna go and pick three of those for me to read. So my fate is entirely in your hands. I think I've already made my decisions. Really? It's gotta get a sip of water. I think there's one I really want to read because I haven't been able to read it for ages. I haven't been able to fit it into a themed video and I'm just like hoping you're gonna pick it. Anyway, should we go, should we go yeah, do it? Yeah, yeah, let's go, let's go. Okay, so whilst Megan might have her preferences, as I'm not a massive reader, but I operate like mainly on cover. What I've noticed from doing these videos with Megs is how many books are always like, like red, white, and black. So instantly, this is a no-go. This looks generic to me. You know, that's just my opinion. Everybody got an opinion. This one, again, it's got such a generic front cover. I like the kind of colorful ones, are a bit more interesting. I think by far and away the coolest front cover is this one here. I just think it's really sick looking. Yeah, that's my first choice. Second choice. I like this, look, the one, look at this one, because I think it looks really cool. It's a bit different looking. And then what else to pick? Again, Never Night is never gonna be something I'm ever gonna pick because again, another generic looking cover. To me, I'm obviously different to you guys because you guys know what's what, whereas I'm like, I don't know shit about nothing. I mean, look at this. I'm never gonna pick that. If you look the same, I'm not gonna pick you. Number one, please judge me. Number two, please hate me. Because number three, I love it. I'm picking Lainey Taylor, Strange the Dreamer. Now, I don't know whether Megan's happy about that or not, because I kind of distinctly remember we did a video whereby she made up this story about it being in the clouds, and I don't know whether that was true or not, but I thought it was really sick. I can't remember whether that was what Megan made up, whether that's what it was. Me, editing. I lost all hope today. I'm empty. Megan was saying that there was one that she wanted to read. I, I think my guess might be Before the Devil Breaks You. I've seen something that looks a bit like this before. Oh yeah, Diviners, that's right. That's the last Diviners. Maybe I should have picked this, but I'm guessing this might be one she wanted to read, but I've already made my picks, so maybe I've got a lie in the grave I've dug. We're back. I don't know whether I've made sensible picks, and I don't know whether I've really made any sort of creative input. I've basically just been describing Front covers. Front covers. <laughs> Instantaneously, I ruled out three books. And I ruled them out for the heinous offence of generic front covers. <laughs> in the sense of, how many books do you see that have got black, white, and red front covers? A lot I of feel covers. like I see loads of them are black, white, and red. Yeah. These two, look how similar they are. Do you see how that's incredibly offensive? Yes, I do. That's why I said it. My first pick, I think, was the most unique of all the front covers. Okay. I also think it's a unique size as a book. Okay. It's got a real heft to it. I just think it looks a bit like Scooby-Doo. Oh, okay. Okay, that's a good choice. I'm happy with that one. Is it set in a school? No, it's set like in a seaside town, like a really small seaside town. That sounds town like Scooby-Doo, bro. Over summer. And I think it's like, oh, like a horror or thriller. Just describing Scooby-Doo. It's kind of, yeah, Scooby-Doo Scooby vibes. Okay, that's a good one. I feel like that'll be one I can read quite fast. Second pick is the one that I thought of all the plots that I would have personally wanted to read. Okay. Because... Are you comfortable? I'm scared. Are you scared? Yeah, I guess. You should be. 
It's a bit different to all of them. It looks a bit more dark, it looks a bit more depressing and thought provoking. And I think it's from an author I've heard of before. I've picked Americana. Is that the one you wanted to read? No, but okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm actually a bit scared to read this because yeah, it's well, quite dense. Dense. Well, it's dense. I just feel that it looks and sounded, and I like the title, something worthwhile reading. Yeah, it's like a more serious, serious read. Period. This is like one I think I'm going to love, but I'm scared to read Daunted it. Daunted. I was kind of scared you were going to pick that. Did you? You thought I'd pick this one? Yeah, and I kind of, not that I didn't want you to, but like, I am daunted by it. So you've kind of just forced my hand. Next one. I think you're definitely going to know what this one is. I think you know I picked this one. I don't. And I don't think you wanted me to. <laughs> and I've only just remembered that after I picked the next one. I was like, oh, I think I know the one that Megan wanted me to pick. And I was like, I shouldn't have picked this. Because I now think I picked it because I thought it was something that it isn't. And I pick Strange the Dream one. <laughs> Because I like the look of Lainey Taylor. Lainey Taylor. I didn't see that when I picked it, but she just looks fun loving. <laughs> why did I pick this? I know why well, you picked this. I picked it because I thought it's got cloud people in it, but now I remembered <laughs> after picking it that it isn't cloud people. We did a video called Odd Book Out where yeah. I made up a. Uh, and you made it up. I made up the, the plot of this. <laughs> Strange a dreamer. This is probably the most unique one out of all of them. This is like set on a in the clouds in the sky, on a village in the sky. So our protagonist believes that he can heal the society through dreams. He starts with insects, um, and it's kind of him trying to get more power by getting the dreams of You're not lying about concept. that. You're not lying about that. That is nailed on true. Right. This is fantasy though, so I'm glad you gave me a fantasy. Now, to tell me which one you think I wanted, because oh, yeah. there was a book no, I really wanted to read. You know, we do a lot of moving back and forth from uni and home, mm -hmm. and the ones that books I always recognise kind of bow up and down with these like a luminous green one and a luminous pink one. Mm -hmm. I saw this one and thought it's got the same sort of look mm -hmm. to it. Then I checked at the back and it said a diviners, and I was like, I heard that before, and these are like superheroes. Megan probably wanted to read this one. I did want that. I mean, you've done well because this one's like a new release, so yeah. I'm finally reading something on time. These two are both books that I've been putting off because I like I'm like intimidated by them. Okay, so I am a hundred pages into Milkshakes for the Almost Dead, and I am really enjoying this. It is such a fast-paced read. The last book I read was Midnight Sun in a reading vlog, and the chapters were like. 40, 50 pages long, which I just don't vibe with. Whereas the chapters in this are like two, three pages long, which I absolutely do vibe with. I'm having a lovely afternoon. It's nice, isn't it? And it just keeps the pace really, really fast. So in this, we meet Diana, who is just finishing her GCSEs when she wakes up in the middle of the night to find out that her dad is in prison, accused of attempted murder. And her aunt comes and grabs her and is like, we have to go and moves her to like her tiny seaside town. There's definitely something weird going on because her mother committed suicide when she was younger. However, we've been having lots of flashbacks that suggest that isn't entirely the case and I think her mother's death or disappearance is going to play a big part in kind of the mystery that Diana and Gloria are gonna have to solve. Okay, I mean, dang, what you want a Scooby snack? Because things are starting to occur that are a bit off, a bit mysterious. There's definitely a lot of secrets to this small seaside town. I'm just really loving reading a light YA book. It's a really fun read. It you literally fly through it. Like I barely feel like it's taking me any time to read it. I'm really intrigued to see where this is going to go. that I am now on page 227 so I'm quite a big chunk through it was kind of like throughout the whole thing this night not, not uh, oh, there's and, uh, 
No, <laughs> I was going to say nice as if it's like pure, but there has been hints of mystery and deception and darkness, right? But for the most part, the story is about like this girl finding friendship in this small town and the friendship has been really interesting and I think very realistic of a teenage friendship, you know, the ups and downs of a teenage friendship. So I've been really enjoying that aspect of it. And then like in literally the last chapter that I read, there was just this massive curveball and I really don't know how to take it. Like I just don't know how to react a lot of deceiving going on a lot of deceiving mm. it was just so unexpected and out of the blue you got a sense that the perpetrator or perpetrators weren't good throughout the story but like nothing on that scale I could have expected. I don't know if I said this, but I do love the atmosphere of the seaside town. I feel like it's really well built up and it's a really good YA book. And like, I mean YA in its purest form because sometimes you can read YA that is too young, you know, like really, really young. And then I feel like a lot of YA these days is kind of new adult but packages YA. Whereas this is like pure YA. I don't want to compare it to John Green because it's nothing like that in writing style or premise or anything like that. Completely separate. That vibe of YA of age range. But I don't think John Green does a good job of it. But now you know what kind of YA I'm talking about, right? Where it's like the pure YA. Not too young and not too old. Even though that's what I was saying John Green was doing. So it completely ignored my John Green example. <laughs> well, she tried. At least, you know, she... I feel like this would be a great read for like a 14 year old. The story is just gonna take on a completely different turn from this moment. Like I can't wait to see where it's gonna go because literally everything that is happening has just kind of, it's just been really sudden. Like the last two chapters, so much shit has hit the fan. So I can't wait to see where this is gonna go now. I finished Milkshakes for the Almost Dead last night and this was like a crazy ending. Like this book didn't feel like a thriller at the beginning, really. It felt much more like a contemporary. And then as, like in that last little bit that I read since I last checked in with you, just shit, so much shit at the fan <laughs> that I could barely keep up with it. Twist after twist after twist after twist after twist. And I just, I still don't really know how to react to everything that happened. There were some things, right, that towards the end were like stated as if they were facts you've known throughout the whole book. And that led our main character to be able to work things out. And I was like, hang on, since when do we know that? Otherwise I could have figured stuff out. When did we get told this? Because obviously I just wasn't paying good enough attention. What are you? An idiot sandwich. Idiot sandwich what? An idiot sandwich, Chef Ramsay. I think it is leaning towards like a 3.75. I'll give it a four on Goodreads. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, the link will be down below. As always, I always link in my description all the books I mention in this video if you wanted to go and purchase them through my affiliate link. Also, I just checked it out and it is on Kindle Unlimited as well. So I'll leave my link below where you can get 30 days free of Kindle Unlimited. But it definitely is like a YA thriller. This book is very young adult and I've been trying to emphasize that throughout because I feel like the young adult I often read is like on the boundary between young adult and new adult whereas this is very young adult and it does a very good job of that but if you are typically someone who reads more adult thrillers I don't think this would be the book for you if you love young adult thrillers I think you should definitely check this out I did mention this when I got it but like full disclosure this was sent to me by the author and the author is my dad's cousin but she's been sending it out to loads of like bookstagrammers and booktubers I've seen a lot of people receive it so now I am gonna start Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie I am so terrified of this book the font is teeny tiny tom is horrible i hate him like i hate him <laughs> i'm nervous but hopefully i'll love it i am about 100 pages into americana so i'm really not that far in and i'm gonna level with you i have been in like the worst reading slump ever <laughs> recently that's so upsetting I am just really struggling to read at all. I don't have any desire to read. Essentially, we are following two characters who were in love and dated during like secondary school and they went to university together. That's the point I'm up to now. But we know that they have left each other for like 15 years, 20 years or something. You know, she went to America. I think he went to the UK after some event happens at the university, but I'm not sure what yet. I haven't reached that point. And it's very much focused on the characters it's very slow moving but beautifully written often reading this and going wow this is so well written i'm really enjoying the prose the tone of voice but i just think my reading slump is like preventing me from like fully getting into it i'll check in once i've actually read some more and like i'm not wallowing in pity about how i'm like not reading at the moment okay bye <laughs>
I'm now 222 pages into Americana, so I'm almost halfway through, and I'm enjoying this a lot more now. I feel like I've got a lot of a better understanding of what this book is now that I've read a bit more. That's what we've been waiting for! It's what we wanted all along! We're following Ifemalu and Obinze, and I originally thought it was kind of going to be like one chapter for each of them, but Ifemalu is definitely the protagonist. She is the one who has to travel to the United States to go and live there, to go to university there because of the strikes that are happening at their university in Nigeria. We're following her life. I wouldn't say if you want like a book with a typical plot, like a beginning, middle and end with a really simple story arc, this isn't it. We're just following her life, which isn't something I've read in a long time. I do enjoy it. It's something a bit different. I know it's not going to be for everyone. It's kind of just using her life to discuss topics like race, like immigration, like identity, like having to come and live in America and how much do you hold on to your old culture and how much do you try to fit in in America. Natural hair for black women. There just was a great section where that was discussed. Interracial relationships, sexual assault, stuff like that are all discussed in really, really interesting ways and like this book is long and dense and like it is a bit of a slog to get through but I'm enjoying this much more than I was like a hundred pages ago. I think I'm starting to appreciate it for what it is and I'm glad that this has made me read it, that Tom picking it has made me read it because otherwise it would have been like years until I got around to it. Cheers. 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 I'm so glad you're here. I am now page 340 and the thing is like there's not really a plot like I genuinely think I could tell you everything that's happening as this story goes along and it wouldn't impede anyone's enjoyment of reading this book because what's important is the topics discussed and the ways in which they're discussed and how certain ideas are like challenged. There was just this whole section discussing like fiction and like race in fiction in America. There was this quote the character says we are very ideological about fiction in this country. If a character is not familiar then that character becomes unbelievable. That reminded me of a lot of discussions that have been going on lately about how white reviewers or white readers often go oh, I didn't find that character believable, I couldn't relate to that character and so rate a book low when it's about a person of colour when you're not supposed to be able to necessarily relate to that character. There was like 40 pages following Obinze from his point of view what would have been happening in his life and I just kind of found that boring. <laughs> Sorry to this man. I really like him as a character and I'm interested to see how he comes back into the story at the end. And I think it is important that we knew what had been happening in his life, but like, I kind of didn't care. I just finished Americana. Okay, I'm gonna give it like a 3.75, so like a four on Goodreads. I did really enjoy it. I just feel like towards the end, it just started to bleed into some stuff was a bit unnecessary. The nature of what was happening at the end was important, however, I feel like it just went on for too long. It is such an insightful book, such a powerful book. You know, it's brilliant. I really liked Roxane Gay's review actually of it on Goodreads. One part that I definitely agreed of is she says, this book is at points indulgent, just on and on the writing goes, the writer showing off her admittedly impressive way with words. Stronger editing would have done wonders for this book, which I definitely agree with. There are points of this where you're like, Okay. Should we speed it up a little bit? Like, let's move on. But the point also of it is that it is just her life, the character's life. There are aspects to this that seem slow, but are important to her progression as a person. There's not really many scenes until towards the end that I felt weren't necessary. Like, I understood why everything was there. But Roxane Gay also says, but when this book is good, it's absolutely brilliant. And that is, that is so true. Like, the points where it makes you go, oh, you know, or like really makes you really realize something are amazing. I'm so glad that I have finally read this. Like, I'm so glad I've finally gotten around to it. So thanks, Tom, for finally making me read it. Otherwise, it would have been years. And I'm very excited to read more from Shimamanda Ngozi Adichie now. I think the topic that this covers and the way in which it does is something that so many people would benefit from reading right now. It's now five o'clock, so I have this evening and tomorrow to read Strange the Dreamer. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be a problem. Bitch, let me tell you something. I think it's going to be the kind of book that I just lie through. I really think Lainey Taylor is going to be a new favourite author. I'm really hoping it's going to be whimsical, kind of like Erin Morganston vibes is what I'm hoping for. So like I'm 10 pages in and I love it. I, I love the writing style. What the fuck? I haven't had a five star read since the end of June.
It's been two months. It's been, it's been two months since I read a five star book and I need it so bad. And I'm really hoping this is gonna be five stars. I love it. I love it so much. I, I'm obsessed. This is so good, oh my god. I can't tell you how good it feels to be in love with a book again. Finally, I have a book that feels really, really special. Encountering this writing that feels so special and personal to you for the first time, like getting to read that kind of writing for the first time is incredible. Essentially, you're following Laszlo Strange, who has been obsessed with the like lost city of Weep since he was a child. And he ends up working as a librarian in this big city and he devotes his life to trying to figure out out the mystery of it. He encounters someone called the God Slayer and people supposedly from this kingdom and is able to travel with them. And that's kind of the point I'm up to now. I'm not sure if you pronounce her name Sarai or Sari, but she seems to be some kind of descendant of a god and lives with these other children of gods. I honestly was 30 pages into this book and thinking I can't wait to reread this. I can't, I can't wait to come back to this again and again. And that so very rarely happens. And bitch, I love that motherfucking song. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. It feels like you're stepping into a dream. The writing is everything I love. This is my favorite kind of writing. It just feels so delicate and special and I, I'm just loving it. So I'm only 150 pages in. So I've got the whole day to read this book. It's all I'm gonna be doing. I'm just gonna be chilling out and reading this. Laszlo is such an interesting character and just the way this world is crafted is just perfection to me. It's everything that I love. Okay, so I know I said I was gonna finish this in one day. <laughs> you know what? I did say that. My bad. That didn't happen. It wasn't because I like didn't want to read it or anything. I just felt very similar to this in the way that I did when I read The Starless Sea. And that I just wanted to take my time with it. It doesn't feel like the kind of book that should be rushed or kind of read quickly. So I'm now on page 280, so I'm over halfway. I'm really enjoying where this is going and the path that the story is taking. I think I've already said how magical and like enchanting and whimsical this story is. I love fantasy books that read like a fairy tale, you know, that read really dreamlike. And Obviously dreams play quite a big role in this. I don't want to say why because I don't know if it's a spoiler. I don't think it's mentioned on the back at all. But it is quite a slow book. So if you're in a reading slump like me, <laughs> maybe wouldn't recommend it. But um, it is slow. There's not like this big thing happened and this big thing happened. But I like that. I like books that take a bit of time to tell the story. Also a lot of really interesting characters that I wouldn't even say are morally grey. You know, like a lot of people love mor morally grey characters. They're like, oh my god, vicious. <laughs> Am I quirky? Like but like characters that are objectively bad, but you can completely understand why they are bad Like you can completely understand their path to their point of view. So I think that's a really interesting Dynamic to have you know like a character who is morally wrong in many ways who you disagree with in many ways But you can completely understand why they are that way. I don't know if it's gonna be a five star. Like I was like that in the first 100 pages and then like the 180 I've read since then, I'm like, oh, it may be a four, like a 4.5. I just finished it and it's made me cry quite a bit. <laughs> I had very mixed emotions about this book. The first 150 pages of this were five stars. The next, I can't do maths, but like up until page 480 were like four stars. And then the last 50 pages were five stars. Let's talk about why I was crying. The ending's sad. <laughs> I cried a lot. This book does a good job of making you so attached to some characters. To some characters. And that's another one of my points is that there are a lot of sub-characters in this book that I wanted to know more of. However, 
the attachment we did have to the characters we did have was very powerful and I don't think the ending would have been as powerful if we had spent time getting to know some of the other side characters and the writing is so beautiful like some of the most beautiful writing I've ever read it I did feel like it lost a bit of its whimsicalness and dreaminess in that middle section I still really liked it you know it was still four stars so I think I'm, I'm giving this like a 4.5 it's not quite the five that we were hoping for that I put out a tweet saying I was gonna have a new five star read like it's not quite that but it's close rarely do I finish a book and think oh I need to read the second one the next one straight away and I feel like that with this I don't own it so like I probably <laughs> won't because I'm I'm trying not to buy any books at the moment I haven't cried at a book in so long for months and I cry a lot like you've seen me cry a lot on this channel lots of positives with this there is that middle section I lost but the ending was just incredible one of the best endings I've read in a long time completely mind-blowing completely heart-wrenching completely all-consuming one of the best endings I've read a long time and like I said it's been a long time since I've cried at a book a long time and I cannot wait to get into more of Lainey Taylor's writing I'm so glad I finally read this and I'm so glad that this video is finally finished because I've been in a massive slump not because of this video I've been in it before this video Tom picked well you know like we had like all four stars really so I feel like he did a very good job and he picked very well. I am proud of him. So that is it for this vlog. Thank you so much for watching if you've gotten to this point. I love you all so much and I am so thankful for all the support I get on this channel and I will see you very, very soon. Bye!